Hello, my name's Richard Mason. Not important. What is important? It's coffee. I want to talk to you today about coffee density, how to measure it. I'll briefly cover why I do it, why I want to do it, and how it affects storage. We've got three coffees here have just arrived in the mail, and they're really, really good coffees. We've got uh, Jamaican, Hawaiian, and a Tanzania. They're pretty expensive, and I want to make the best of them that I possibly can. Now, right, coffee. When you're making coffee, it's all about extraction. Uh, a coffee bean, 70% of it is just plant matter, the other 30% of it is extractable. And, uh, but you don't want to extract the full 30%. When you do that, it's going to taste bitter and not very nice. So it's all about extracting the right amount. If you're under extract, it's sour, and if you're over extract, it's bitter. And when you get it just right, it's in the sweet spot, and you can get all the fruit flavors, it tastes wonderful. That's what you're aiming for. Now, okay, coffee, when it's first roasted, is um, giving off lots of carbon dioxide. It goes through a maturing phase. And if you try and make coffee, while it's still giving off a lot of carbon dioxide, then the uh, water has trouble getting in and penetrating the coffee grinds, fighting against carbon dioxide that's coming out. Particularly when you're making an espresso, it's got a really short contact time with the water, like 20, 30 seconds. And uh, if a lot of carbon dioxide is coming off, then it's gonna under extract. And when you under extract, it's gonna be sour. So you don't want to use your coffee when it's still really fresh and giving off lots of carbon dioxide. Now, how long you have to wait depends on how much it's been roasted. When it's a really dark roast, that can just be a couple of days. It's really brittle, fragile, gives off all the carbon dioxide very quickly. When it's very lightly roasted, the bean's still really quite hard, and uh, it gives off that carbon dioxide very slowly. And if you get a coffee and start trying to make a coffee out of it every single day during the month, then you'll find that it'll go through this phase, like a normal distribution curve. That it'll taste sour, and then it'll get better and better um, before it starts going off and getting worse and worse and worse. So if it's really dark roast, it's gonna go really quickly in a few days. And if it's very light roast, it's gonna take weeks. And the only way you really know is if you can determine how darkly roasted it is. So we're gonna talk about storage. So during that, um, during that maturing phase, you want to allow the carbon dioxide to come off. So you want to store it in something that will allow degassing. Now when you have a coffee bag shipped to you, it has that degassing um, one-way valve on it that will let the carbon dioxide out and stop the oxygen from getting to the beans and causing them to go stale. And the minute I open this bag, uh, air is going to get onto them, but while they're still degassing, the carbon dioxide actually um, protects the beans from oxygen to some extent, to a little extent. Now if I store the beans in a airtight canister, that's not too bad, but each time I open the lid, oxygen's getting into all the rest of the beans, and so it's going to um, cause the stain to go faster. If I single dose them, if I measure out each dose that I need, and I put them in these things called bean cellars, they have a one-way valve, just like coffee bags. And then I don't need to open the whole lot every time I want to make one coffee. I can just take out my single dose. So these are really good storage. But even these don't keep them forever. It'll start, eventually, start staying, going off as well. So if I want to keep the coffee long term, like for about a year, and share it with other people, have a freezer full of really good coffee, I need to freeze it single dosed. And these are fantastic. This is a food saver. And you can use single doses directly from frozen. You just chuck them in the grinder and they'll actually work better. Um, the grinds are more uniform um, and it will just taste better. So, highly recommend storing in freezing bags eventually, but you need to know how long uh, before you freeze them. And to do that, you need to know the roast level. Let's talk about the roast level. Um, the 
there's not three roasting levels of light, medium and dark, that's rubbish. There's not even seven roasting levels of like light city, city, American, French, dark, Italian roast, that's also not good enough. There's actually about 250 roasting levels and how much it's been roasted affects how you store it, um, when it's going to be good to use and everything. One of the best ways you can determine how much it's been roasted is with a cheap volumetric cylinder. The, there's 100 mils, they come in about two sizes, at least two categories I should say. There's uh, cheap ones, about $6 US, uh, plus or minus one mil accuracy. This one here is plus or minus half a mil accuracy and it costs me about $20 New Zealand. One of the best investments you can make if you care about your coffee. And I'll, I'll show you why. So green beans, they start off super hard. They're one of the hardest uh, materials in the plant kingdom. Really small. And if you fill 100 mils with green beans, it's going to weigh about 70 grams. And when you roast a bean, it loses mass. The water gets boiled off and some carbon dioxide gets trapped inside the bean. If you very lightly roast it um, and fill it 100 mils, it'll weigh about up to 55 grams. And if you really darkly roast it, you lose a lot more water and 100 mils will weigh about 30 grams. So that's about 25 grams difference. Now if we're going to measure weight, we need some accurate scales, and you've probably got some because you care about coffee. These are the Akaya Pixis scales. They're uh, accurate to one hundredth of a gram. But any 0.1 accurate gram scales are pretty good. Uh, the thing to note about scales is sensitivity. So um, when they're really sensitive, they will and have a fast refresh rate then every time you add or remove a bean, it'll record pretty much straight away, and these are very good at that. Whereas cheaper scales, they'll often not change the recording until you add or remove like one or two grams, and that can just drive you crazy over time. So having really good scales is a good investment for life if you're into coffee. So highly recommend these ones. Okay, so we're going to measure our density by filling this with 100 mils of beans, uh, we're going to use this 25mm um, piece of dowel for a tamper to flatten it down. We're going to try and get them level. Obviously, uh, every time you do this, you'll find that you're not 100% accurate. So if you do it three times and average it, um, you'll get a pretty good reading. Um, so for the 25 grams difference in 0.1 gram measurements, that's the, where the 250 different roast levels come from. And that changes everything for your storage and your making of your coffee. It's the best piece of information you can get from your coffee when you first open your bag. I'm going to stop it. So there. Okay, I want to show you uh, looking up a couple of coffees here. Now we're going to go to website density.coffee. Now the first one we've got is a very darkly roasted uh, one, it's from El Salvador and it's Los Angeles, it's a density of 0 0.355, you only need to put in 355, uh, it does a search, it'll find it, and it was roasted on the 18th, and we'll put in the coffee name, El Salvador, Los Angeles. This is just so for when we print it out, it's going to look good. We'll know what it is. Okay, now two results here, filter or espresso. We're going for espresso. And it's telling us we need a dose of 19 for this roast level. And when we look at the coffee aging from the roast date of the 18th, we can see today is the 27th. And it has now just reached its peak. And it is now time to freeze it and because it's quite a dark roast it's not going to last very long it'll only last um, for up to two weeks really before it starts going off so that's 
bad example for a quite darkly roasted 0.355. Now if we do another coffee and this one uh, happens to be much lighter roast. It's going to be 423 density and it's the same roast date. And this one is a Yemen. And it's a Kamat Hazib. B. Submit. Okay, espresso. This one you can see it requires a slightly different roast because it is a lighter roast, it needs less dose. Uh, that's going to put through more water proportionally. And now on the from the roast date, today is the 27th, and it is still improving. We do not want to freeze it. Not until we get up to the 4th, so we won't freeze that one just yet. Um, the point of putting the name in, you can see up here, it says Espresso Yemen Akut Hazib. If we come down, this got print this post, and it will print out a nice little table that you can keep, which will tell you all your uh, ratio, dose, yield, and all the rest of the settings that you're going to need to make the coffee. And there is a, another print button, click here to print, and off it goes to the printer. That's it. So knowing the density and using the tool uh, on density.coffee helps me enormously with my high value coffee. Anyway, I hope you've found that useful. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.